فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم والفقه أخص من العلم والعلم معرفة المعلوم على ما هو به في الواقع والجهل تصور شيء على خلاف ما هو به في الواقع والعلم الضروري ما لا يقع النظر والاستدلال كالعلم الواقع بإحدى الحواس الخمس التي بين حاسة السمع والبصر والشم والذوق والمس أو بتواتر والعلم المكتسب ما يقع النظر والاستدلال والنظر هو الفكر في حال المنذور فيه والاستدلال هو طلب الدليل والدليل هو المرشد إلى المطلوب والظن تجويز أمرين أحدهما أظهر من الآخر من غير قط والشك تجويز أمرين لا مجيد لأحدهما على آخر على آخر The author رحمه الله when he finished defining the reality of fiqh and we studied al-ahkam al-shar'iyah which is tariqah al-ijtihad and he explained all of that for us after he did that the author rahimahullah he's now going to go back to the issue of what? ma'rifah brothers what did we what did we say that fiqh was? What is what is um, fiqh was? Ma'rifatu al ahkam al shar'iya alati bi tariqi alati yu'raf wa ma bi tariq bi tariq al ijtihad, sah? So the first one was what? Ma'rifa, right? What did he just finish talking about? Al ahkam al shar'iya, right? He now went back to ma'rifa. What does ma'rifa mean? Are you with me? We said that ma'rifa means what? Idarak, right? Perception. So the author now goes into speaking about what is perception. Are you with me, brothers? Well, fiqh wa akhassu min al ilmi. Fiqh is more specific than knowledge. Which was more specific? Al fiqh. So those who say, um, fiqh and fa'ilm are same is wrong because fiqh is more, more specific than al-ilm and the reason for that is because ilm is ma'rifatul ma'lumi ala ma huwa fil waqi' three things have to be found for you to say this you have knowledge of this thing the first thing is al-ma'rifah there has to be idraq perception two Ala ma huwa. As it is. And the last thing that the author didn't mention, which is jazim and certainty. You have to have it with certainty. So, ilm is what? Idraqu al shay' ala ma huwa alayhi idraqan? Jazima. It's basically <coughs> perceiving something as it is with certainty. When that happens, you have al ilm of this matter. Then the author mentions ma'na al jahl ignorance. The reason why he mentions jahl is لأنه مقابل العلم is the opposite of knowledge. Once you know knowledge, then you learn the opposite, become strong. Ignorance is what? Is تصور الشيء على خلاف ما هو في الواقع is, is two types, jahl. The author defined the first type. The first one he defined, which is jahl, which is basit, simple ignorance. 
The author here, he defined jahl, which is basit. Simple ignorance, which basically means Now he defined here jahl, which is murakab. He defined here jahl murakab. Well, he didn't define which is jahl basit. Jahl basit means adam al idraki bil kulliya. Adam, adam al idraki bil kulliya. It means that this person has no perception of this thing at all. You ask them, they say to you, I don't know. That's jahl. There's no perception here at all. The second is perceiving it opposite to what it really is. Somebody asks this a person, what's this? And he says, this is a glass. This is a problem because his, the reality and what he's perceived are not in correlation. They're not, they're not intact. They're not correctly in line. But he believes he's right. This is a problem. This is a compounded ignorance. It's hard to convince this person this is not a glass. What you need to first do is to pour out what is in it, what's in his head, the perception that he has. Get rid of that. Once you got rid of that, and he believes that he's, he doesn't know, then you brought him to a natural state. You can now convince him that what he is holding up is a glass, not a, uh, sorry, a plastic cup, not a glass. Are you with me, brothers? And this is the type of person you shouldn't really indulge too much in. If the person is jahl, is jahl murakab. That type of person, you tell them, Inni ala min amri, I'm upon clarity in my matter. I'm 100% sure that this is a plastic cup. What do you believe? It's a glass. Okay, Allahu Akbar, mashallah, assalamu alaikum. That's jahl murakab. If you have time, like in, you want to discuss to pour out of his head and you have time to waste then that's up to you. Whereas the other one, the person who's giving da'wah shouldn't really busy himself with people who have jahl murakab, who've made their minds up. You knock there, who's there? These people are problematic. People who've made their minds up, when they come to you, they come to you with a preconceived notion, they already believe something. They just want to hear that from you. Those are not the type of people you busy yourself with. And you don't focus your da'wah on people like that. They are what? Those are the people who are going to leave. They're going to die. What's going to benefit the people is going to remain. There are, j there are millions of people who are upon jahlun basit. They're the, why are you wasting so your time on a minority who are jahlun murakab? When there are people who are jahlun basit, simple. Are you with me, brothers? Their jahl is basit. They, you tell them, Allah, Allah said that. The messenger said that. Okay, khalas. You've got those people. Sah? They're willing to take it from you. To engage too much in your time with these people who are jahl murakab is not correct. And you don't see the ulama doing that. Are you with me, brothers? Because those people have made their minds up. Are you with me, brothers? The jahl here is jahlun. The author mentions the jahl murakab, compounded ignorance. <coughs> okay, then the author, rahimahullah, when he finished talking about ignorance, he explained that the ilm, knowledge, the way that we attain knowledge of something is two ways. There are two ways in which we attain knowledge. The first one is called Ilm al-Daruri. Ilm al-Daruri is knowledge that is innate. You know it out of necessity. Everybody here knows fire burns. You don't need to go to school for that. They don't need to tell you the, 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 the uh, oxygen and the carbohydrate or whatever is burning. And, you don't, you don't have to go to tech, you know it burns, the khalas. The newborn baby's hand, he will take it away from the fire. He does it. Who told him? He knows it. 
Are you with me? This is ilm al-daruri. It's an innate built, built in knowledge. It's the knowledge that doesn't occur by observation and analyzing. It doesn't. It's already in you. The author explained it. What did he say? It's the knowledge that occurs not by observation and looking for evidence. It doesn't come through that. It's already there. It's instilled in you. It's the kind of knowledge that you can't even get, get rid of even if you wanted to. And if you do try to go against it, this is where the ulama call it juhud, stubbornness. The second one is al-ilm al-nadari, which is sometimes called ilm al-muktasab. It's the ilm which you need to gain. Everybody needs to attain this type of knowledge. It's the kind of knowledge which you will call it empirical evidences, empirical evidences. So based on what you see, deduction, based in, basing on what your eyes can see, it's tangible, it's... You come to it after what? You come to it after observation and after looking and after observing and analyzing, that's how it occurs. Then the author rahimahullah gave examples for what is ilm al-daruriyu. He says, al-waqa' bi ihd al-hawas al-khams. It's anything that occurs from the five senses. التي هي السمع والبصر والشم والذوق واللمس أو التواتر. If you see something, or for example, you hear something, or you smell something, or you taste something, or you touch something, this is or you hear something through a multitude narration. All of these he put it under علم ضروري. It's knowledge that's known out of necessity. You can't come and... I know I'm holding a pen in, pen in my hand. Are you with me? That's... I can see it. It's like... Akh Sa'ad saying that I wasn't in the class yesterday. I saw you. No, I wasn't there. This is Baruri, it's necessity. This is what he's saying. The author, as for Ilm al-Nadari, he didn't give an example like him. Uh, so Ilm al-Nadari, he didn't give an example for it. He gave an example for Ilm al-Daruri, but he didn't give an example for Ilm al-Nadari. But an example for Ilm al-Nadari is Usul al-Fiqh itself now that we're studying. It's Ilm al-Nadari. Usul al-Fiqh is Ilm al-Nadari. You guys didn't know that Ahkam al-Shar'i is categorized into two. I had to tell you that. Or that had to be told to you, right? It's what you learn through observing, studying, science. Are you with me? You go to uh, physics, chemistry, the things that you learn, all of them are ilm al-nadari, observational knowledge, empirical evidences, I mean, empirical uh, uh, knowledge. Then the author, rahimahullah, he explains what nadar means. He says, fikru fi hal al mandur. It is to think in the. It is to, to. It is to think in what you're looking at. That, in definition of his, is weak. Would have been better if he said, حَرَكَةُ nafs لِتَحْصِيلِ idrak Is making your nafs move in trying to perceive something. The word for istidlal, the author also explains what, me, what it means. He says it means طَلَبُ الدَّلِيلِ It's looking for evidence. Istidlal means, because when he's defined ilm al what did he say? He says, uh, it depends on what? Another was istidlal. So he has to tell you what another means. And again, what istidlal means. Another, he already told you what it means. Istidlal means what? It means talabu dali, looking for evidence. The word is in the Arabic language, it means talab. When any, anything comes with an alif is seen before it, it means talab, requesting or looking for. So looking for evidence. The istidlal according to. The Usuliyin has two meanings. Al istidlal and al Usuliyin tutlaqu ala ma'anayini. Istidlal according to the Usuliyin is referred to two meanings. The first one is talabu dalil, requesting and looking for evidence. And the second one is iqamatu dalil, establishing the evidence. On who? Ala al khasmi fil munadharati, establishing the proof against the one you're arguing with in the debate. Or irshad al sa'il, or guiding the one who's asking the question. Those are the times when they use the word istidlal. 
The author defined what dalil means. The definition he gave for dalil is what? Huwa al-murshid ila al-matlub. It is the thing that guides you to what you're looking for. Al-murshid means the thing that guides you. Ila al-matlub, it guides you to what you're looking for. And this definition is had lughawi. It's a more lexical definition than it is a technical definition. He's not defining it according to the usuliyin. So the correct definition that we will choose for is مَا يُتَوَصَّلُ بِهِ إِلَىٰ صَحِيحِ النَّظَرِ فِيهِ إِلَىٰ مَطْلُوبٍ تَصْدِيقِ أي خبري It is مَا يُتَوَصَّلُ بِصَحِيحِ النَّظَرِ It means through correct observation you will reach إِلَىٰ مَطْلُوبٍ تَصْدِيقِ you're going to reach an information, you're going to reach a hukum, a ruling. Whether it be affirming this or whether it be negating it. It doesn't matter, you're going to reach something through it. That's what delil is. Then the author, rahimahullah, he defined al-dhan wa shak Why did he mention al-dhan wa shaku? What's the reason in which he's mentioning dhan wa shaku for? is because he wants to finish off the other remaining types of perceptions there are. Knowledge is one form of perception. Ignorance is another form of perception. Are you with me? This is called maratibul idraq, the levels of perceptions. So he thought it was wise to finish off the remaining types of perception that you might need. So the author, rahimahullah, he says, He said, Dhan <coughs> means Tajweez is shay. It's to give permissibility, rule permissibility. Tajweez here means Al hukmu bil jawaz. Tajweez means what? Al hukmu bil jawaz. You give permissibility or you permit for something. Ahaduhuma adharu min al akhari. One is higher than the other. So you have something which is 60 and 40. Two things one is 60, one is 40. The part that is 60 is called dhan. So it's something I'm, I'm asked an issue and I know it's 60% or 70% and I'm ignorant of it 30% or 40%. The 60 or the 70% is called dhan. The opposite part which is the 30 or the 40 is called wahm. It's called wahm. You see how I said it, brothers? I said, Wahm. I placed a sukoon on the hat. I didn't say Wahm. I didn't place a fatha on the hat. The reason is because Wahm is different from Wahm. Wahm, we took it in Mustalah al Hadith, in Science of Hadith. Are you with me, brothers? And Wahm, the sukoon al hat, is what we're taking now in Usul al Fiqh. They're two different ones and they're two different words. So don't confuse these two. When you're saying it according to the Usuliyin's usage, you say Waham. According to the Ulama al Mustalah, you say Waham. The difference between the two, I've mentioned it in my other explanation of Al Waraqat. So, what is Dhan? The percentage that's high is called Dhan. The percentage that's low is called wahm. Wahm. The author didn't mention that here. I, this is from me. I'm telling you it. The author didn't mention wahm. What about if something is asked to you and they're 50 50? You can't. Your, knowing of, your knowledge of it and your ignorance is the same. This is called shak. That's why it says, wa shakku tajweezu amrayni is permitting two things. La maziyya ala al akhar. 
There's not one you can strengthen over the other. This is called what? This is called shak. So shak is different from dhan. Now you know the difference between shak and dhan. Dhan means you have a higher percentage than you have. Waham means what? It's less percentage. Shak means when they are, you're in a st standstill situation. So mo more likely is going to be dhan. Less likely is going to be waham. Waham. And the same is going to be called what? Yeah? Similar. Yeah, shak is similar. It's both the same. Why hasn't the author here mentioned aqidah, i'tiqad, belief? Huh? Why wasn't i'tiqad mentioned, the word i'tiqad as well? Believing something, right? Isn't that a form of perception? Why is it not mentioned here? Huh? It's a prerequisite here. Any other answer? It deals with aqeedah, not deals with fiqh. Good. It could be a dhani or shak. Okay. When we were talking about ahkam al shar'iyyah al khabariyah, remember? And we said al ahkam al shar'iyyah al talabiyah, remember we said that? I'tiqad enters al ahkam al shar'iyyah al khabariyah. And we're studying usul al fiqh, we're not talking about ahkam al shar'iyyah. Al-Khabari, we're talking about Al-Hakaba Shari'i Al-Talabiyya. So that's why they don't bring it in this chapter, they don't talk about it. And it is not spoken about, and it's not spoken about, uh, it's not spoken about. Are you with me, brothers? So all of these types that we mention, which is Usul Al-Fiqh, is the types of perception, fiqh, is all based upon what? <coughs> fiqh is connected to what, brothers? It's connected to the textual evidences. All day, usul al-fiqh that we're going to study, the marad, the place it goes back to, the istimdad, the place it's rooted from, is the Arabic language, the Quran and the Sunnah. The later groups, brothers, what they did was, they fell into a problem which is one of the istimdad which they made for usul al-fiqh is ilm al-kalam. Are you with me brothers? And we know the line of poetry, وَأَوَّلُ مَنْ أَلَّفَ فِي الْكُتْبِ مُحَمَّدِ بْنُ الشَّافِعِ الْمُطَّلِبِ وَغَيْرُهُ كَانَ لَهُ سَلِيقَةِ مِثْلُ الَّذِي لِلْعُرْبِ مِنْ خَلِيقَةِ The first person who ever wrote in usul al-fiqh as Maraq al-Su'ud mentioned in a thousand lines of poetry is Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i and Imam al-Shafi'i hated ilm al-kalam he's the one who placed the science he put it in place he said my belief regarding those who turn towards ilm al-kalam is an yudraba bil jarid wa na'al that they get lashed with what? with branches and shoes that's my ruling wa yutafa bihim ala al-ashair and that they are paraded in the market and it said to the people This is the reward of the one getting lashed with the branches yeah. and with the shoes on his head It said to the people This is the, this is the ruling of the person who turns away from the kitab and the sunnah and he turns to ilm al-kalam So how can you then say that the person who put it in place was most hating of ilm al-kalam and this is a science that is timdad from it, it's rooted from, it's taken from uh, ilm al-kalam. No, it's not. No, it's not. What did, what did he say, Sharif al-Din al Imriti as well in his nazm? Uh, what was the beginning of his nazm? How did he start it? What's the first word he says? قال الفقير شرف الدين شرف العمريطي ذو العجز والتقصير والتفريط الحمد لله الذي قد أظهر علم الأصول للورى وأشهر 
على لسان الشافعي وهونا فهو الذي له ابتداء دونا وتابعته الناس حتى صار كتبا صغار الحجم أو كبارا وخير كتبه الصغار ما سمي بالورقات للإمام الحرم Who did he say was the first person? An Imam al-Shafi'i An Imam al-Shafi'i did not like ilm al-kalam and anything close to it. Are you with me brothers? So this is a science that we will say is taken from al-kitab wa sunnah and the language of the Arabs. We'll take a 15 minutes break and we'll come back again insha'Allah ta'ala.